We thought that was just from um, them using forceps when he was born. An innocent picture. You can see the bruise that he had on the side of his forehead. Captured moments after he was born. We didn't know that that meant anything about uh, the hemophilia. Is the preface to Lance Rice's 17 year story. A story fraught with medical problems, frustration, and depression. I was born with a head bleed. When I was two, I contracted hepatitis C. A couple years later, I um, tried to get rid of my hepatitis C and found out I had epilepsy. It's kind of like life keeps throwing him curves and I keep going, when is it going to be his turn to kind of just take it easy for a little while? But life kept the curveballs coming for this kid from Indianapolis. Though his hemophilia and hepatitis C were under control, Lance's epilepsy was not. He routinely suffered seizures, which his mom says made him a shadow of the kid he once was. For me, that's probably the most heart-wrenching time we've ever gone through because he would come home. Here's a kid who was always happy, you know, outgoing, had lots of friends over all the time, and he would come home and he would cry every day. It turns out the head bleed as a newborn left extensive brain damage and was the reason for his seizures. And medicines weren't helping. And I remember the um, neurologist saying, you know, the next step is, after he's failed this many medications, the next step is, I'd like to send him for a surgical consult and I'd like to send him to Cleveland Clinic. And that's when the Rice family got to experience Cleveland Clinic's Neurological Institute and its model of care. We call that multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary uh, plan of care centered around the patient, which is what the Cleveland Clinic is uh, leading the country in right now. Uh, this revolution uh, uh, centers around providing the best service possible for the patient, which is the reason we're all here uh, and the reason I come to work every day. Lance met with a neuropsychologist, neurologist, and neurosurgeon to see if he was a good candidate for brain surgery to help treat his epilepsy. When we sat down to talk about Lance, you know, we were uh, colleagues from the pediatric neurology and epilepsy side of things. We had the neurosurgical uh, members of, um, of the committee there. We had neuroradiology. Uh, we had uh, the psychiatry and psychology aspects. We had the social workers that were involved with the case. We had the hematologist because this was something unique. Uh, about Lance that needed very careful addressing. When you have multiple care providers and you know they're communicating, then you have to tell less of your story each time. You repeat less information and you can be confident that the information that you have shared has been passed on to the, the care providers who need to know it. And it was decided Lance was indeed a good candidate for surgery. So I realized it wasn't a decision being made lightly. There was a lot of thought and planning being put into it. In November of 2006, he had almost one-fifth of his brain removed. I really wasn't even thinking about the brain. I wasn't really thinking about my head or what could happen. I was just wanting to get rid of the seizures. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Give me a hug. Are you kidding me? That's with one year free. Ooh, look how beautiful that is. One year after his brain surgery, uh, it's easy to see Lance is enjoying life again. A new life without seizures. I'm ready to go to college, and I know what I want to do for the future. In my mind, these are the people who gave gave me my son back and gave him his life back. Grandma just gave me a quote just not two seconds, two weeks ago that, you know, if you can think it, you can do it. So there you go. <laughs>